Cherry to read about Abraham, and then we'll read about Moses. These were friends of God. Hey, Miss Florence. <laughs> you are a busy bee. Busy bee. <laughs> uh, let's read about Abraham. And this is in Isaiah 41, 8. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend. Oh, do you want to be called a friend of God? Abraham was a friend of God. Now that, that put him, a, set him apart as a special person. Mm, mm, he was mm. a friend of God. And here's Moses. We see Moses, that God talked to Moses as his friend. Read this verse. Okay. In Exodus 33, 11. So the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Moses was a friend. Abraham was a friend. But I've got good news for you. Because of Jesus, you are a friend of God Amen. as well. Amen. Read this uh, from John 15, 15. Jesus was speaking to his disciples, and this applies to each of you that you are a friend of God. Read this, please. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what the, his master is doing. But I have called you friends, because all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known unto you. Hallelujah. Okay, so there it is. You're a friend of God. Just love God and obey his word. You are a friend of God. That's the that's the criteria. That's the principle. If you want to be a friend of God, if you want to have good friends, find those people who love God and obey His Word and become friends with them. You know they'll be uh, they'll be a true friend uh, that will stick with you through thick and thin, mm. uh, regardless of what the situation and good times and bad times. True friends are always there for you. Amen. And we need those friends. A lot of the world uh, uses a lot of different things to decide who their friends are. Uh, you've got to think like I do or or uh, uh, do what I do or be where I am, be in my institution or my, my uh, group. Then you're my friend. No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, that if you love God and obey his word, you are my friend. Now, why was Abraham a friend of God? Well, it turns out he made a, God made a covenant with Abraham and Abraham believed the covenant. He mm. believed the promise and that brought him into that category of friendship. Okay, read this, Sherry. James In James 2. 2, 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him, or counted unto him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Okay. Hallelujah. So why was he? Because of the covenant. The covenant, see, establishes a relationship between you and God. That's a vertical relationship. If you have a covenant, if you enter into the covenant and not the covenant uh, that that we uh, created, but the covenant between Jesus and the Father, uh, they allow us to come into that covenant and that gives us a relationship. That's a vertical relationship. But it also uh, enables us to uh, relate to each other. We relate mm, on the basis of the covenant. Because you, you believe the covenant, you believe what Jesus did, uh, that he died on the cross, he shed his blood, uh, his body was broken for us. Because you believe the same covenant, then we're on that same, we have a horizontal relationship, we have a personal relationship. And it's the same covenant that connects us with each other, also connects us with God. And that's really important. And, and that looks like the cross to me. Hallelujah. We have a vertical mm -hmm. beam and a horizontal beam. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. We also have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's right. And that his name is Jesus. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Friend. Hallelujah. Closer than a brother. Better, hey, better, better than a brother. Better than a brother. Hallelujah. Now, I want to tell you an interesting little story that happened 
um, I guess it's uh, Sunday night uh, in in our lives. Uh, we had been in Spain. We've been in Spain this past week, and we traveled all day Sunday, and I, maybe we've been traveling like 24 hours. I, I don't know. We were in multiple mm -hmm. airports and multiple airplanes, and, and uh, we got to Atlanta Sunday night, and we were so tired we didn't even drive home to Athens, which was another 70 miles. But we rented a motel there in uh, uh, Athens, in Atlanta, and uh, as soon as Sherry's head hit the uh, the pillow, oh boy, she was asleep. <laughs> and so here I am, uh, sitting on the side of the bed, getting ready to uh, to go to bed uh, last Sunday night. And and Sherry said these words that friendship uh, is another word for love. I looked at her, and she's sound asleep, but she said <laughs> she said. Friendship, because we were thinking about friendship, talking about friendship. She said, in her sleep. So this came from the Holy Spirit. I mean, came through her spirit. She spoke it out, and she had no recollection the next morning. But mm. I, I was there. I heard her say it. Friendship is another word for love. Well, we just read James 2.23, and in it, it said Abraham was a, a friend of God. But in another translation, the Passion Translation, he's called a lover of God. So this friendship we're talking about is also love. So mm -hmm, friendship mm -hmm. is another word for love. She said it in her sleep, but I, I found it in the scripture. And so I want to read it out of the Passion Translation, James 2.23. So in this way, the scripture was fulfilled because Abraham believed God his faith was exchanged for God's righteousness. So he became known as the lover of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So friendship is another word for love. Amen. So you, Amen. You want to be a lover of God? You want to be a lover of people? Well, it's all about the covenant. It's mm, about that mm. covenant and we build those relationships. But it's possible to get out of alignment. And the one thing that gets us out of alignment is if we love the world more than we love God. See, that'll throw off that. We're supposed to have just this straight vertical beam between us and God. But if we love the world, it's going to throw mm -hmm. everything off. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to read this, uh, Sherry, out of mm -hmm. James 4. James 4, 4. It says, you adulteresses, do you not know that the friendship with the world is hostile toward God. Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy unto God. Okay, now we can also wow, wow, we, wow. we can also get our relationship. From, so loving the world is going to mess up our uh, relationships, but also uh, we can have our uh, horizontal beams, and those can be off of. They're not level. They're they're out of kelter mm, with the uh, other believers with and, other believers with and, our family and so let's look at first john uh first john 4 here yeah first john four twenty. if someone says i love god yet he hates his brother or sister he is a liar for the one who does not love his brother and sister whom he has seen cannot love god whom he has not seen. No, oh, hallelujah. Which so, is very true, so, very true. So we can get our our relationships, our vertical beam off. We can get our horizontal beam off. And, and one way that we do get the uh, relationships off uh, among people is if we say we hate some people and yet uh, we're supposed to love all people. We're even supposed to love our enemies. Do you, do you love your enemies? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. if, if you don't, then, then that cross, that beam between you and God and, and that relationship and that beam between you and other people, everything just falls over. Uh, so mm, we have to mm. keep everything in alignment. We mm, have to keep that right good. relationship with God and right relationship uh, with our brothers and sisters. Now, the next uh, part I want to talk about is there were lots of people on the earth and God didn't even call them people uh, until mm -hmm. he called them out. 
And mm. then he said, okay, these are my called out no, people. people. Now, mm -hmm. we see that with Abraham and his descendants. Oh, wow, wow, and, wow. And, and Israel, then, that they were his people. There wasn't even a people until he made a covenant with them uh, through Abraham, and then it extended on uh, through his descendants. And, and those were his called out people. And so interesting. Well, who are other people? Well, he just called them the nations, or he called them the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But there were no people, according to the Bible, until he called them out by the by covenant. When you have a covenant oh, relationship, wow. oh. starts here in the old in the old covenant. But when you when those people had a covenant relationship with God, then he calls them his special people. And that's Israel. And you might say, well. Uh, they didn't really, they weren't that good. They, they weren't that holy. They weren't that, but it didn't have to do with how good they were. It was because God called them out. Oh, and he hallelujah. said, these are hallelujah. my people. These are my hallelujah. people. Well, the same concept goes on today in the new covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also calling people out. Uh, and so the other people who are not God's people, they're, they're just called nations or Gentiles or heathen or what, whatever you call them. They're not his special people. We see this here in Peter. Peter. Uh-huh. About Exodus. Oh, we were, I thought we'd already covered it. No. Mm -mm. Oh, I read it. Exodus 19, 5 and 6. Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possessions are my own people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Okay, and now we go into the yeah, New Testament. Yeah. Again, we see there are special called out people. It wasn't because we did anything special, but God made covenant with us, and because of that, then we're those special called out people. First Peter 2.10 for you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. We weren't even a people. That's right. That's right. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You know, and his mercies are new every morning to us. Hallelujah. Okay. So you're his people. Hey, that's good to know. Yeah, we're his people. We, Hallelujah. We have a place on yes, the earth. We yes. are God's special people. We also see it. Uh, Jesus, uh, when he was in Caesarea Philippi, and, and if you look, and when you're in Caesarea Philippi, there's a big mountain there, it's Mount Hermon, and uh, there were lots of temples at that time there on that rock. It was a big rock, and uh, there, there were Roman temples, and there were Greek temples, uh, but uh, Jesus said, I'm going to build my church, mm -hmm. my church on this rock, and he wasn't talking about Peter at all. He's talking about the revelation, but he's referring to uh, the big rock there, the Mount Hermon. That's where the other temples were were built. And he said, now, who do people say that I am? And they said a bunch of uh, strange answers about a bunch of dead prophets that they thought he was a dead prophet. But uh, <laughs> then Jesus said, uh, who, who do, whom do you say I am? And Peter by revelation, knowledge said, you are the Christ, the son, son of, of the living God. God. And then Jesus responded to that and said, I'm going to have a called out people. Hallelujah. They're going to call, be called the ecclesia. They're mm. going to be the church and my church. Okay. So, so we're still talking about his special people. These are his friends, special people. Uh, they're the ones who are called out. And I'm going to call them out. So uh, read this, uh, Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 19. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And upon this rock, upon revelation of who I am, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it or overpower it. Okay, but these, Hallelujah. these, these are special people now. They're the called out one. They're the church. Ah, oh, praise God. And me, we're the called out, out people. people. We were not a people. That's what Peter said. We were not even a people. But now mm. God has 
calling us his people. We are special. We are friends of God. Hallelujah. That is exciting to me. Amen. Amen. And now the thing that Jesus talked about, he said there, um, you can't do anything greater than this. There's no greater than this, that you lay down your life mm -hmm. for your friend. That's what Jesus did. Amen. He called Amen. Your friend. Amen. He laid down his life for you. Now, the interesting thing about that is he's wanting us to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's expecting us then to lay down our life for our friends. Now, remember who are our friends, those who love God and do his commandments. Do his commandments. That's what, that's the people. And so we have to take that same attitude that Jesus said. He gave his life on the cross. Now, now what we have to do is we deny ourselves. And so we prefer one another. See, Ooh, this, this is an application of the message. How do we, how do we apply this? We prefer one another. We serve one another. We help one another. Mm. It's not all about, oh, me and myself and mine. No, yeah, it's this what is I about, need and what I want. Th this is about being a part of the church, part of the body of Christ and being willing to put down our agenda, our schedule, put that down. When somebody calls you, needs help. I, I think about, uh, um, we just uh, received a text a few moments ago about uh, a woman uh, whose mother had been put in the hospital and, and she called, uh, t text us and asked us to pray for her mother. And, and uh, Sherry could respond, uh, well, I've been already been praying for her. God had already showed mm -hmm. me uh, that I need to be praying for her. See, that's where you're, you're putting God's agenda ahead of your own. Uh, that you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And so not only did we begin to pray at that moment when she asked us to, but we had already been, been praying. praying. It, it didn't take us by surprise uh, that uh, her mother needed prayer because we had already been praying for her. That's because you've got a relationship. Yeah. It, you're friends with God. Yes, you're friends with God. You're friends with other people. And when you're like that, you know what's going on in their lives. Uh, you know, God will share those things with us and so that we can be praying for other people. And they may not have even contacted us yet. Uh, and you need people like that in your life so that they will know by the Spirit of God that uh, you have a problem, you have an issue. So you already have intercessors going to bat for you in prayer because they know what's going on. They're sensitive to the spirit. That's the kind of friends we need. You need, need some friends yeah, like that. Yeah, amen, People amen. who love God and do, do his, his work. Mm. And those are the people That's then good. that are connected, oh, are connected uh, at, at the heart level. This, this is important. You, you, who are your friends? How do you choose friends? You need to have a close circle of friends. We all do. We all need close circle of friends who are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit that even when you don't know what's going on in your life, there's you have somebody else that's praying for you, uh, putting a cover of protection over you. Amen. And that's Amen. your friends. That's the true friends that will lay down their life to serve you and, and to help you. Well, and that's the same thing for us then. We need to do the same for our friends. We need to be willing to lay down our life, uh, to lay down our agenda I mean. and, and uh, to take up uh, what what the Lord wants for us. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. I, I want to talk about this. Well, but before you uh, move on to the next point, I just want to thank uh, all of you, any of you, that prayed for us last week while we were in Spain because this this meeting that we uh, were a part of uh, we we did teaching that that's that's true we did ministry uh, that's true but also it was preparing the way for the Lord to go into Europe and it was a prophetic meeting where the, the prophetic began to flow 
and messages begin to come from the spirit of God. And in, in what the Lord shared with me was that, that he was opening up a great effectual door uh, into Europe uh, to bring the, the gospel. And I know that others have gone into Europe, even Apostle Paul himself. But this is another season and this is the timing of the Lord that he is saying, I want to expand in Europe. I want I want my gospel of the kingdom uh, to be brought forth. And so we're we're excited about being a part of what the Lord is doing all over the earth. Okay, so cool. thank you. Thank you for laying down your lives to pray. So we were there with fathers of the faith who were uh, making decisions uh, to, and uh, it was a meeting, a strategic meeting so that we could develop a strategy for um, relocating people uh, from Latin America into uh, Europe to begin discipling people there mm -hmm. and to bring forth the presence of the Holy Spirit, presence of God uh, and with signs and wonders so that uh, we can have an inroad in Europe. And, and actually people then from the meeting are, are relocating uh, there. And so it's mm -hmm. an exciting time. It's exciting to be a, a, a part of what God is doing. Now, I, I was talking about the uh, how we look at other people. And a lot of times when we meet a stranger, uh, and this is the way uh, people in the world operate. When they meet a stranger, uh, they want to find out something about that stranger and categorize them or put them in a, a little hole in their mind, in their thinking. In their cubby hole. <clears throat> uh, and a pigeonhole. And a so, pigeonhole, yeah. And so once, once you, if, you, if a natural person or even a carnal Christian meets an, a a new person, they haven't met them before, and they're just going to be asking questions. Well, where do you go to church? What What's your background? What's your where? Oh, what town did you come from? And, and once they begin to find out information, then they tend to want to categorize them, and, and what they're doing are label them. I'm using this concept of labeling them. Well, uh, and once they label a person, then they they say, well, they're less than I am. Uh, because if you label people, then all of a sudden it makes you more important. You know who they are and you can put them in their place uh, category. So that's the way a lot of people operate. They try to label. We're not supposed to put label uh, labels on people. Uh, and that's that's the point I want to make now. We're, we're not to label people because our relationship with other believers is based on the work of the cross. Amen. On, on what Jesus did. It, it's not what organization they're in, what their doctrine is, what what they believe, where they came from, where they live. None of those things. It's all about the covenant that Jesus died on the earth. Amen. And so if people label. And so it has implications for us. Mm -hmm. And and Jesus said, we're not to judge. Right. And see, if, if you put label on new people as they come to you and the mind, see the natural mind wants to uh, put people in places, wants to have a natural order of things. And one of the things the natural mind does or the carnal mind does is is try to say, okay, that person, I know they're in that denomination and they don't believe this and they don't believe that. So I'm going to put them in that category, label them, put them down. And that seem, makes seems to make me more important if I can categorize other people as strangers and and then I don't have to worry about them anymore. I don't have to think about them anymore. I have categorized them. I have labeled them as inferior to me. And so that makes me seem to be more important. But the Bible talks so much about judge not. I want to look at a couple of verses here. Mm. Romans, in, in Romans In Romans 14, 13. Therefore, let, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather determine this not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block 
in our brother or sister's way. And then John 7, 24. Do not judge by the outward appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. And also Matthew 7, verse 1 says, judge not lest you be judged. Okay, so we don't want to do that. That judging, see, then that puts that horizontal beam I've been talking about, relationships, uh, and, and it, it puts people at different levels. Rather than that being horizontal and everybody's on an equal playing ground, uh, playing field because and, it, and it's because of the covenant or well, see the covenant began uh, the new covenant of course the old covenant was uh, uh, brought forth from Mount uh, Sinai but the new covenant uh, came forth from Matthew had Matthew 26 verse 28 when Jesus uh, at the last supper he said he passed out the cup and said, this is mm -hmm. the blood of my new covenant. covenant. So, so that was the beginning of that. And we continue to operate in the new covenant uh, and and lift up the uh, communion elements of the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus. We continue to do it. But it started there at the Last Supper. So read this first. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the, of the new covenant which is being poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Okay, so there it was. It was beginning there. Of course, it continued on in the, at the cross where Jesus um, poured out his blood. His blood was shed. His mm -hmm. body was broken. But, but we see the elements of it here in the Last Supper. And we see it also in uh, Paul's writing in uh, 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 10. 10. I'd like Sherry to read this. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 through 17. Is the cup of blessing which we bless not a sharing in the blood of Christ? Is the bread which we break not sharing in the body of Christ? Since there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. One body. One body. For we all partake of the one loaf. Hallelujah. Okay. So we are one body and we have many members. We have parts. You have arms, you have legs, you have feet, you have eyes, you have ears. Yeah, there's different parts, but we're all important. That's right. That's a good point. We're all important. And you can't say, well, I'm more important than right. somebody the arm, The arm cannot say I'm more important than the foot or the eye more important than the ear because we need every bit of our body to function properly. And that's the way the church is. That's the way the body of Christ is. We need every part functioning properly. And we need to, you know, do you love your arm? Do you love your hand? Hallelujah. Do you love your feet? Yes. Yes, we do. We love all parts. And that's, uh, praise the name of Jesus. They're, they're all different, but they're all important. We, we don't want to do away with any or put any down. Now, the important thing then, we're talking about this covenant and the new covenant we've talked about when it was when it was started. And now I want to say that out of that new covenant, that's where we have unity. Mm, out, mm, mm. That's where we have unity. And, and so when you recognize, see that your relationships with other people in the body of Christ are based on the covenant, not what they did and not what you did, but it's what mm, Jesus mm, did. Mm, mm. And then we can be in unity with Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, talk, Sherry, oh, I want Sherry to read a couple of verses about unity because it all comes out of what Jesus did, not what somebody else did and not what you did. Read so, these two verses. Let me, before I read, let me just say this, that unity does not come from someone being exactly like you are. It does not have anything to do with us being like each other. It has everything to do with what Jesus did on the cross. And knowing Jesus. And knowing Jesus. Oh, First yeah. Corinthians 1.10 Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be made complete in the same mind 
and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. So right now, in the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of God, I speak to any division in, in, in your family, in your uh, associates, in the workplace, uh, any divisions in the in your church congregations and your gatherings, I speak those divisions gone and that the love of Jesus will take its place, hallelujah, and that the unity will come in Jesus' name, hallelujah. First okay. Peter 3, 8, and this is out of the Amplified Bible. Finally, all of you be like-minded, united in spirit, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, courteous, compassionate toward each other as members of one household and be humble in the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 We can be in unity by the spirit when we walk in the spirit. Okay, so I'm going to bring this to closure and I and I want to just refer to the preamble of the United States Constitution. And the Constitution was a type of agreement and uh, a, covenant. Course, a, a covenant. And uh, of course, we had been under England's rule. And so when the founders of this uh, nation uh, wrote a constitution, which would be an agreement or a, uh, a covenant, uh, then they wrote this preamble to it and explained why they needed a constitution or a, or a covenant. And, and I just want to share, just to read this very first part of it. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. Okay, so that's all we'll read about it. But the reason they wrote, they developed a constitution was so that everyone could have a more perfect union. It's the same thing for uh, men and women, uh, let's say in marriage. Mm -hmm. And we've had a couple of examples recently where two, uh, a, a man and a woman, uh, they wanted to have a marriage, they wanted to be married and that was coming up, but they decided to, to move in together and live together and when they did that, they had all kinds of fussing and fighting. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and one one couple did that. And then we just recently had another couple do the exactly the same mm -hmm. thing. They were told, don't, don't be intimate with one another before you get married. We know you're making plans to marry, but don't, uh, don't go across that line and be intimate before. And because both of them ran into... Uh, intimacy and interrelationship before the marriage, before they got married, and then they had all kinds of fighting, and they couldn't agree then to marry. Uh, and now, why did they have all of that problem? Because the only way you come into unity is when you have a covenant. And so, in the marriage, uh, there's a covenant. You you enter into a covenant, uh, and that's that's what Sherry and I did. We entered into a covenant uh, to honor uh, one another, to uh, be prefer one another, to prefer one another, to be married, and and then uh, we could have unity. And so we've been. This year will be sixty years of marriage, mm -hmm. but it came out of having that covenant relationship. If you don't have that covenant relationship, uh, see, there may be some physical uh, union and intimacy there but there's no mutual unity of the spirit where well, the spirit will mm -hmm. hold you together. Uh, oh, that's good, Fred. The spirit yeah. will hold you together. Hallelujah. You Hallelujah. Covenant, so we can have a, a covenant relationship between God and a believer. We have a covenant relationship between man and wife in the form of marriage between the husband and the wife. That's a, based on a covenant relationship. But I'm telling you today that you can also have a covenant relationship with other believers. Uh, once you realize that the relationship is based on the covenant of what Jesus did, and you enter into that covenant, then you have friends 
friends who will love God and obey By his, his commands. commandment. And they will put down their life for you. That's a true friend. That's what we've been talking about today. Mm -hmm. True friends. And true friends, uh, you might come together and say, well, I, I believe uh, the same as another person. We have the same doctrine. We have the same faith. But base, make sure it's based on covenant, on the covenant between Christ and the Father. A and then enter into that. And just by entering into that relationship, you can uh, develop true friendships uh, with a co uh, that are based on the covenant relationship, based on what Jesus Christ did in your life and what uh, what uh, He means to you. Then you can relate to other people, and then you you don't have a basis uh, for prejudice or discrimination That's right. because it's on the basis of what. Jesus did Our not, judgment. Yeah. not not the color of the skin of somebody else, not the not the income of somebody else, not the education. Not, it's based on one thing. It's based on covenant, covenant relationships. That's what a true friend is. I hope you have some true friends. Yes, and if I you mean. don't have these true friends that we're talking about today, you need to uh, rise up and look around yeah. and find true friends, mm -hmm. people who love God and uh, love his commands, love his commands, obey his word. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. For being Hallelujah. Turned over to Sherry. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, a true friend, I'm going to go back to that point that brother Fred made, and then I'm going to open up the floor for your comments and, and about laying down our lives for our friends and you know this is something that we all have busy lives we all have things that we're doing uh for the lord we're doing for our families we're doing for uh for you know those that we work for uh, but but let me say this just just consider your your agendas consider your schedules and that be open to the Lord. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit when he wants you to lay down what you're doing and help somebody else. And, and I believe that friendships uh, come forth out of love. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's another word. Now, uh, friendship is another word for love. 